Sergeant Glenn Lucas is en route to an early morning nuisance bear call. I got a call around 1.30 this morning for a, a bear that's stuck in a have a hard trap, full body, not just a paw or anything, um, all the way in there. And a mother bear and another cub is hanging around, and it won't let the homeowner release the bear out of the trap. Just called Matt, get him going as a safety officer. My biggest concern with this situation is definitely that the sow, the mother, is right there. And I'm sure she's not overly pleased that her young one is stuck in a trap and can't get out. So um, it's just something that definitely makes me plan strategically and what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it and where Matt's going to be for safety of me and him and, and the homeowner as well. Getting this bear out of the trap as quick as possible in a safe direction without getting clawed myself is going to be <laughs> the best course of action here. There's Matt. I've handled plenty of bears in my career and, and released them out of traps, but they're usually a culvert trap that they can't see you, and we get to be at a distance. So you know, I have a hard trap that is open wire mesh. It's going to see me and smell me, and it's going to know I'm there. So it's just on the front of my mind to make sure that everything goes smoothly so I don't get hurt. Oh, there it is. It's out in front of my headlights, Matt, if you want to pull up to the left. But just be aware, I don't know where that sow is, so. Oh, yeah, here at the left. OK, let's go straight for the trap and get ready. As soon as I pull in the driveway, this thing is crying out for its mother. I can't see her, which is really not a relief. My concern is that she's going to come back. You all set, Matt? Yeah. I'm going to bring it over there, I think, if you're good with that, or do you want to release it right here? I just release her right there. I wouldn't move it any more than you need to. I know. She's probably going to go up a tree. Um, <laughs> and so if that's the case, we'll just have to kind of wait her out, and Mama will come back. Yeah. Don't. Yes, I know you're pissed. Keep going. Just going to drive Push her, her off, off a yep. little bit more. Matt's call to get up and get the cub out of there was, was perfect. You know, as soon as I get it out, it takes off, and it starts going towards the wood line and, and crying out for its mother. And it's a perfect spot to be reunited, is in the woods and not in a cage. In Wentworth, New Hampshire, Conservation Officer John Demler prepares to check deer hunters. His bow season is now underway. I'm going to go to my registration station and drop off all the materials for registering a deer. The deer registration slips are important. The Fish and Game Department uses it to manage the population of the deer or to make sure that not too many are being taken. Those are hot off the press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just pressed them up. Huh? Yeah, basically. On the law enforcement side, for us, if something doesn't really line up on that registration slip, then it might be worth making a phone call or trying to speak with that person so we can see what really happened. It's always an exciting time of year. I'm hoping we see a couple deer today. It's always fun to see that a hunter was successful, um, especially this early in the season. Where's that deer going? Hold on. We're at, we'll turn around. We just drove by a minivan with a deer strapped to the roof, but it was coming down from where the butcher's is, uh, which is kind of weird. It seems like it'd be going up to the butcher. There we go. How's it going? Yeah. You're looking for Rick Warbens um, for the Baker River Deer Farm? I'm looking for the uh, check station. Check station? Yeah. Okay. 
You just passed it. Cool. It. Yep. Is I was this... actually looking for a pen, too. I need to fill my license, too. So. Yeah, so there's not a tag on the steer? No, it's not. I just shot a few minutes ago and cleaned it in. OK. So right now, I've got a giant warning flag thrown up in front of me. Uh, I've got a, a young hunter here who's taken a deer. The deer isn't tagged. Uh, it's strapped to the roof of a minivan, and at this point, is being transported without its tag. So we're actually looking at a few different violations. Yeah, so as soon as you shoot a deer yeah. and you come upon it, yeah. then you immediately have to detach and fill this out and attach it to the animal. Okay. So this is a this is a violation that's going to cost you your hunting license for a year. And then on top of it, now that it's on your vehicle and you're transporting it without a tag, that's another violation. So you took it with a bow? Yeah, I did. Do you have your bow? Is it in the back somewhere? Or? Um, yeah, sure. Let me take a look at that. Cool. All right, and then do you have uh, your name and address on any of these? Uh, no, I do not. OK. Am I supposed to? Or... Yep. Um, All right, so there's a lot yeah, going on yeah, here. I'm sorry. This is like looking like rules, yeah. you're like a hardcore poacher at this point uh, because of all the laws that you just broke. Yeah, I'm sorry. OK, why don't we, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the truck here and we can walk to the back. So uh, my game warden sense is definitely heightened here. He's got an untagged deer um, that he's just driving around with. There's no accountability for it. He could have shot this deer and nobody would ever know about it because he hasn't put his tag on it. He doesn't have it registered. However, the fact that he's got it strapped to the roof of his car is showing me that maybe he's not trying to hide anything. Uh, maybe he just doesn't really know what he's supposed to be doing at this point. So you're looking at like a few hundred dollars in, in fines and losing your hunting license for a year, all right? I, I don't think you're trying to hide anything, no. right? It no. just sounds like you're just not familiar, but ignorance isn't, yeah, like you're yeah, responsible for, for knowing the laws. Yeah. Uh, that's how it works, you know? And that's where people, you know, people get a, give hunters a bad name too, because they're like, well, I didn't know that's, you, yeah. you have to know, you're the outdoorsman, you're the one that's supposed to be the expert on things. Yeah, yeah. And you should be telling other people how it goes type deal. Um, I am going to issue you a ticket for not having your name and address on your arrows, okay. which is a violation also. Mm -hmm. um, but that one doesn't come with a license suspension. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, but I'm going to give you warnings for the rest of this, so that way in the future you can't say, well, I didn't know type deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So today this young hunter is going to get a pretty good break. I'm only going to give him one summons. Um, it's not going to cost him his license. It really wasn't that type of situation. We had somebody that just didn't follow the rules, and he's being held, um, you know, accountable. But at the same time, um, you know, he's not getting hit with the full extent of the law. 